From Honolulu, Hawaii, this is Shumai Shirashima. Welcome to Doom Business. So, Christian. Yes. You heard that tape. Yes, that's right. Today, size, size puddle. We're going to present to you an old recording, a cassette tape that you found in a uh, in the what the kitchen drawer of your yes. house. It was made by my brother. It was made almost ten years ago. He had his own show. Dolby Shirashima, your brother, had a paranormal talk show called Extraordinary. He only made a few episodes. And this episode applies to the thing that you found in your mysterious hole, which we talked about last episode. Yes. And we're going to hear about the origins of it now, I believe, on this cassette tape. Now, I understand that the sound quality isn't the best, but hopefully people will bear with us here and have a listen to it. Yes. (laughs) Now, mind you, my brother is my twin, so he sounds exactly like me. Yes. So don't be concerned if anyone sounds similar to other people you've heard of before, because this was years ago. Hope you enjoy Size Puddle. or email comment to zombieplanter at gmail.com That's Z-O-M-B-A-N-T-E-R at gmail.com Now, from the island of buildings, Dolby Shitashima. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Tonight, we have a special guest on, a strange fellow who claims to have a special puddle in his basement. Puddle? A puddle Hmm. with paranormal properties, apparently. Three months ago, I received an email in my Gmail account, Hmm. and it said um, the title of the email was Magic Hole. It's three pages long. With It's very detailed, but it's in French. And here's what it says. In summary, it says, Dear Mr. Dolby, I have in my possession, in my basement, a magical puddle with paranormal properties. Can I please come on your show to talk to you? We have him tonight. Here he is, Mr. Sai. Uh, Hello. Hi. How do you pronounce your last name there? My, my last name is Yamato Sawit. Before we begin, I should actually um, stop the show for a bit and also introduce, introduce my co-host, Shania Ramstahausen. Yes, yes. Um, I am um, a paranormal uh, journalist, investigator rather. It happened for many years too, yes, actually. Yes, yes. Since and, age um, 18. Well, that's wonderful. You can buy my latest book off my website. It's called... Glitter by day and glow by night, colon, the crop circle chronicles. Colon. Nice of you to join us in our studio. Oh, yes, yes. the studio. This is actually not our own studio, yeah. though we do intend on getting one when we have the money. Right. I'm, I'm sure you will. We will. Well, it's... Why did we have to sneak in here at 1 a.m. in the uh, morning? I mean, it is spooky this way, but... It's scarier, and it's 1 in the morning. For the ambience. This is kind of nice, though, that you're not on the phone, that you're here in our studio live 
But since we we're both here on the island of Oahu, uh, it made more sense for me to just come in. Although I didn't, I didn't think it would be at 1 a.m. Okay, so you are from here then. In the morning. So, so you do live here. We, okay, we know that much by U H. Well. Yeah. As uh, I said, what the, is your address? I, under house. I understand if you want to hide your exact no. address because of privacy matters. I, 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 I cannot, as we discussed before the show, and will not reveal the specific address of the house in question. But I will say that it is somewhere near UH, which is the University um, of Hawaii, mm -hmm. as you know. Yes. So uh, we'll leave it at that, shall we? Well, one more thing. Are there mountains? Well, I think we discussed before the show that there were mountains um, near the house. It, it is in Manoa Valley, which is a valley. There are mountains on either side of it. Hmm. I see, I see. But is your house located right behind the mountain? There's a mountain behind it, and there's also a mountain in front of it because it's a valley, and it's facing parallel well, not, to the valley. Not facing exactly, but is it right behind It's perpendicular the to the valley, actually. Hmm. And I'm, I'm getting a... a mountain is both in front of and behind yeah. it. I'm getting a, a mental image there. Yes. Uh, it's a valley. So it's... It's in so, a valley. So it is not exactly behind the house. It is not... So you can't walk up to the... So your backyard is not the mountain. You could walk to the mountain, but it would be a, a long walk. It's not directly... Although there's no other houses between the mountain and my house. Oh, so what's... What is exactly behind... It really behind depends on how you define where the mountain begins. Begins? Because it's already a slope, but the whole valley's a slope. When does it begin where it gets steep? Uh, that, how far do you have to walk from your backyard to the mountain 30, where it gets... 30 yards. So it is right behind your house. The, the mountain is right behind your house. No, because there's 30 yards of non-mountain space that's just a slope behind the house that's full of dry brush and so all right, on. All right. So, uh, all right. tell us about this puddle. All right, yes, yes. Where should I begin? Well, I mean, um, your story starts, I believe, well, like your email said, in yes. the basement. So... Is it a magic hole or a magic puddle? Take us through the steps, if you will. It's, when did you first notice the let's hole? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. The first time I noticed the hole was a day when I, um, it was raining out and I wanted to change the uh, tarps on the roof. See, I was in the middle of renovating the house, right? right. As I said. Right. And I was afraid that there'd be leakage into the, into the house in the basement. Um, so I, I checked the basement and I saw a puddle. You saw this puddle? I was staying there at the house to do some renovations at night, mostly with the lighting and electrical and all that. You know, because it's an old house, right? Yes, and it was a Tuesday, I remember, because American Idol. Anyway, I was over there at about one a.m. Good show, by the way. You know, so it was real scary because it was one a.m. Like how it is now. Actually, it's one o five. You see, at the time I was living mm -hmm. at my my girlfriend's place, but what's her name? Charlene. Do you know her? Uh, what's her last name? Well. We kind of agreed. Um, she asked me specifically before the show to um, not mention her last name on, on this show. So I hope you understand that I can't, you know. Hmm. Hmm. Also, her first name is not Charlene. It's something else, but... And what is that? She asked me to change it to something, you know. I will say it's, it's similar to Charlene, but hmm. significantly different. Hmm. At any rate, I was well, first there of all, wait. late at night at 1 a.m., so you know it was scary, because it was 1 a.m. in the morning. Hmm. Yes, like now. Yes. And it was dark. I was replacing the, the bulbs down there, and strangely, in the pitch darkness, and this is something that you could not notice if there was any ambient light in the room, but in the pitch darkness, I noticed that the, the puddle was, in fact, faintly glowing glowing it was glowing now that are you sure is about this i see that you have glasses on now it was glowing what what kind of glow sorry it was it was a sort of yellowish uh, reddish glow hmm. oh interesting you know i wrote about something like this in my oh book. in your in your book um, my crop circle book right. glitter and glow glitter and glow yeah yeah and there was um there was some glowing not there were no puddles though 
um, emitting around the perimeter of the crop circles, but it was uh, more of a red orange, which I believe mm. is reptilian in origin. So, well, what, what do you mean by reptilian in origin? Uh, the reptilian <laughs> aliens who created the crop circles. You, you'll have to read my book. Oh, actually, you more. mean like they're, they're lizard, called lizard something. people? The li yes, the well, lizard people actually are from Hollow Earth. Not exactly. Well. You said it was an orange red, and I yeah. saw a yellowish red glow, mm. which I assume is not the same thing. So hopefully, mm. there's no um. reptilians around. When I passed the flashlight's beam over the uh, the glowing puddle, I wanted to see what was inside of it. Potentially, I thought I don't know what I thought. Some kind of glowing thing could be in the puddle. I mean, I know it's crazy, but right. I attempted to peer inside, but I noticed. When the beam passed over it, I saw faint wisps, faint wisps of a vapor rising off of the puddle. Hmm. Were there any shadows? Did the vapors have any shadows, like, on the wall? In the flashlight beam, they did also cast shadows as any, you know, vapor would. So there were shadows? There it, were shadows on the oh. wall. Have you ever heard of the vapor. shadow people? Um, yes, I think I have. You have? Yes. Oh, and what is your thought, I mean, like, on the shadow people? I don't. I don't trust them. I actually have an experience personally with vapors. With, with a shadow person, actually. Oh. No way. Yes, I'm serious. Actually, Blanche. I miss her. Who's Blanche? She is my mom's lover, life partner. <laughs> in this day and age, it's, it's it's no secret. Oh right, not that there's anything wrong with that. You met her. She was in a wheelchair. And a lovely person. Blanche. Mm -hmm. Actually, did experience a shadow person. Experience and this might, how? This might actually um, be important to you, Mr. Sai, because this could explain a lot of things. But her experience, um, well, we have this beetle. I was raising this beetle cross country, right? She claims that the shadow person was actually sitting in the back seat of the beetle, staring at her and doing something weird with its hands. Something strange. Like, I wouldn't say fondling, but I'd say creating. Sure wasn't a homeless person? No, it was No. So Blanche and the shadow person, they stared at each other. They just looked at each other intently for, um... Well, she claims that, that it was for an hour. Hmm. Blanche. Mm hmm at, at any rate, I, uh... As soon as I saw these vapors, I was kind of, you know, afraid because... With the horrible smell, first of all, mm -mm. and the vapors, I was afraid it could be something poisonous. And I wanted to get out of there just to be safe. Right, right, right. And uh, then I, well, I called my girlfriend at the time and told her all about this. And she did not believe me. Yeah. Well, you know what, actually, so your girlfriend didn't believe, your own girlfriend didn't believe it. It's very dramatic. His own lover yes, did not believe him. Yes, or GF, as I call her for short. Hmm. which is short for girlfriend. Hmm. And I, from that point on, just decided to get out of there for the night. Right. I, I Yes. So I jumped in my car, which, by the way, is a Beetle, hmm. strangely enough. Was it one of those newfangled It was the remodeled? 70s. It was the original 70s Beetle. With, not, with not the, the plastic rust. kind that's new now. Okay. With the rust. Hmm. Now, I don't want you to go off, you know, I mean, I know you were just... Well, this is related to that, actually. Well, because my mom actually once had one of those Beetle cars. Yes, you, you mentioned that. And you were born in one. Yes, and I was actually born in one. And you were raised in another one. We only had one beetle. Oh. You know that. You were I'm there. I'm sorry, I was mistaken. Well, during my college years, I still had the damn thing. And, um, well, my parents were That was hippies. when you repainted it, though, right? Well, like, it's a I pink I saw it at that color. bar where I met you uh, the other day. <laughs> okay, let's not go into that. Well, no, no, please do. Well, this, this might actually help you and your problem with the basement. See, my parents were both hippies. Mm -hmm. But my father, he ran off with another woman named Aww. Sheila. And he just left me and my mom and her life partner, Blanche, right? Mm -hmm. That's too bad. I would grow to see her as my second mother. Blanche. Well, my mom, my original mom, was a weird person. Mm -hmm. That hippie. She never wore a bra. Wow. Remember that one time? A lot of women yes, didn't on back in her day. In the turkey? She, she never had a bra. She was always topless. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not something that to, to laugh about. 
I was young, and you th you you would think that because of, you know, like I've seen maybe a lot of nudity as a child. Mm -hmm. But even seeing seeing her nudity disturbed me a great deal. That's understandable. And she died of can um, cancer of the skin. Right. If you had not moved or ran out of that basement that night, you would have gotten cancer of the skin. Well, there's no way to really know that, is there? What I was trying to get at is the fact that as I jumped in the car, um, I looked behind me uh -huh. through the rearview mirror of the car, uh -huh. and I saw clouds. So it was raining. And so there was a mountain behind your house. There, there yes, is. there was a mountain some distance behind my house. And above that mountain, I saw clouds gathering what kind of clouds? right over the house. What, what kind, kind of what kind of clouds? They were dark clouds that were silhouetted by the moonlight. Mm -hmm. Pretty, because it was one a.m. and that was pretty scary. I'm, I got to tell you, the witching. Well, you know, now, actually, maybe maybe that was nothing. Maybe it was ju you know it could just be a coincidence of weather. Well, you know, I've seen movies where clouds congregate you know around like a certain house or a mountain because um, Independence Day. That was on today, actually. Independence Day. Now I, I don't buy it that might, guy Bill the, Pullman as a president though. He looks too young. Bill Paxton? Bill Pullman? Oh. It's Pullman, not Paxton. Well, in that movie, the clouds actually were, they were shrouding, they were hiding the um, giant UFO. Maybe this Ooh. is, ah, your, um, your, your book, what, reptilian? right? Reptilian? Your book, the yes. colon book, right? That yeah, didn't glitter actually, and glow. Uh, right? That didn't exactly. actually happen though, right? Did it? Well, in of your experience. Of course it did. I have eyewitnesses. I remember actually back in um, Christmas of 91, we were chatting a bit on my mm -hmm. porch. Mm-hmm. And you were telling me about actually this one story back in Kansas, or was it Utah, um, where you were on your bike, mm -hmm. and then in a distance you saw like what he just said, the clouds mm -hmm. gathering over like a mountain, but this mountain mm -hmm. was shaped like a flat mountain. Mm -hmm. And that's where I saw my first crop circle. Right, un un underneath that mm -hmm. mountain with... There was no puddle though. But, there, but the colors were there, though, right? Yes. It okay, probably was not even related, I don't think, um, you know. Hmm. Unless it was hmm. glowing also at, in the same color. No. It hmm. was red-orange. Well, getting back to my story. No vapor, though. Yes, which no vapor? I mm -hmm. Oh, yes, telling. Mr. Sai. Yes. So this is all, I mean, things are coming together, like, this does not seem as foreign as your email made it sound... I don't know why I wrote that in French, by the way. I, I just thought I would. Did you ever return to the house? Yes, and that was only the beginning. Hmm. You see, the next day, I decided to come back to the house. This time, I was prepared. I had my scuba gear, which, as you know, I am a uh, recreational scuba diver by profession. I brought an old pair of scuba gear, or set of scuba gear, and... I decided I would use that to protect myself from the potentially harmful vapors in the in the oh, basement. Oh, right, yes, yes. I put on the oxygen tank, all of it, including goggles. Including the goggles. So you walked down the stairs. Oh, did, did, did you even have the, um, the, the, the flippers? Were they on your, your fetuses? I had... I wore the flippers to protect my feet, but I had to cut off with a, um, with a saw. I had to cut off the extra... The extraneous flipper portion They're because the it, they got in my my way on oh, dry right, land. Yeah. They're used for see they're used for moving in water, but on land right. they they're they're getting your way when you try to walk with the flippers. So this you have to true. cut them off. I once actually read that it is impossible, impossible to walk down a flight of stairs with flippers. Hmm. It's possible, but not with dignity. And probably be hard to outrun an alien. Well, and that tank is on your back. You mean a reptilian? Well, which is a type of alien. From Hollow Earth. If you read my book, you'll know. Well, I want to read it, but I just can't find it. Okay, well, anyway. So, you went in this uh, full scuba gear... Right, with the flippers with cut. The oxygen to protect tank. myself from that terrible smell, which could be toxic. And harmful and to your skin, so you get the whole skin-tight suit on as well, right? Protect your skin. You see, I'd, I'd spoken... the goggles? You had goggles on, Yes, too, I had saying. goggles on. Uh -huh. I had spoken to a friend of mine who works at the university um, uh, who can do some chemistry. They do water testing over there. And uh, I wanted to find out, naturally, what was in this hole that I'd found. Right. So um, he asked me to gather a sample 
which is why I went back down there. I uh, I took a um, a jar that was in the basement full of uh, nails, hmm. um, along with some old hardware material, emptied it out, and then with a stick I carefully collected some of the what appeared to be water from the puddle. E- explain the um, procedure uh, with with a stick. I'm not imagining. I can't visualize how you. I put a I I took a, a wooden stick, and I stuck it into the open jar. Then I used it to lower the jar into the puddle so that I wouldn't get any of the liquid on me. Mm -hmm. Right. I lowered it and dipped it gently. Right, right. Yes. Hmm. I collected that sample, Mm -hmm. capped it, put it in the freezer. Freezer? Hmm. Well, my my friend um, over at the uh, university, or UH as it's called, University Mm -hmm. of Hawaii. Right, right. um, said that I had to keep the sample fresh and, you know, so I, I put it in the freezer overnight. The next day, I opened the freezer and the jar, the the jar had turned black. Black? It had turned completely black. The jar or the contents so the of the glass jar? So the glass turned jar, black. No, the glass is still clear. It's a jar that's clear, but what's inside of it was black. And oh. what was, well, the water... The water turned Maybe black. Maybe you should write a book on it. it. That's what it appeared to be. So when the water got, um, when the ro- when the water was kidnapped from its home, put into the freezer. I wouldn't say kidnapped. You unless you want to say you know use terms like that that are incorrect technically. So you kidnapped this water. Like antique for a house, for example. You froze this water. Hey, that makes sense. And when it thawed, what did you find? It had turned black. Well, I should preface this. I carefully removed it from the freezer using a newspaper that I rolled it up in. And I took it to the university, to my friend. And we, under controlled conditions, opened the jar. And inside we found hair. Hair? Black hair. Oh, my goodness. You uh, Hair? Are you hearing this? Ramstehausen. Right. The water inside was completely full of silky black hair that appeared to be human. Uh, wow, that hmm. is weird. Hmm. And upon pouring it out, we found the hair was growing out of or growing through a single nail. Didn't you like dump out all the nails? Fingernail? No, it was a, a Carpenter nail. Carpenter nail. Like. Yeah, oh. it was an... Uh, well, well that's, now that's really weird. From I guess a, a it hard probably nail. was... I, I mean, I didn't think that I left a nail in there, but it was probably, you know, left behind from the jar that right. I emptied mm, out of the nails. Was there any way that there was a hair in the jar before you put the sample? Maybe the hair mutated I and grew? I can't say, because if I didn't notice a nail, uh, maybe I didn't notice a hair either. Mm. But oh, or other maybe things. Maybe I should have taken off those goggles. But anyway. Well, that's the problem. I had the gloves on. I couldn't feel anything. Yeah, I'm not blaming see. you for leaving a nail in, in, in the jar. I mean, I mean actually, it's, it's a good thing. I'll admit, it's a mistake, okay? I mean... I probably should have made sure there was no nails in the jar before I mm. put it in. But it's it's not a mistake. I mean, this is good. Or no, this because have hap- yeah, because of it, we may have never found out. Yes, exactly. That Very good. These hair, what appeared to be hair, mm-hmm. grew out of or through the nail. Mm. Uh, did you folks, um, your friend at UH, did you dissect the nail? I'm because I maybe there's something go- um, interesting inside of the nail, something that you haven't seen yet. Yes, yeah, so we cut the nail open. And, and what did you find in the nail that was very different? We found more hair. Hmm. Well, we found the hair had been growing through it. How through, alarming. Through the nail. There was hair inside of the nail. Oh, so the hair... cut it open. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, I see. And In the nail. You, uh, what did you do with this nail? Or, or all, all the other liquid in the jar. That too. I didn't want to throw it in the trash. I just wanted it to get away from me as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. So I threw it into the toilet of the old house. Because I figured, you know... The antique house. How much worse could it get? Right, because you don't stand there anywhere. You stand at your, at your GF's house. Yes, GF, which is short for girlfriend. Which I have of mm. one. Did it work, your toilet? Did it flush? It appeared to at first, but that's another story. We'll get into that later. Okay, all right, all right. Let's not mm. jump ahead of ourselves here. Flushing a nail down the toilet. Well, I flushed worse. Not good for plumbing. I wouldn't have done that, but... Anyway. Well, I know that actually, in your first book, 
mm-hmm. which was actually a pamphlet mm-hmm. called Ru- Runaways. Mm-hmm. You spoke of a toilet once that was haunted. Oh, right, right. The yes. legend of the nun dead. Yes, yes. There was the haunted toilet. Hmm. It's, it's out of print now, isn't it? That book um, of yours. Yeah, but I'm working on getting it back in print. Right. Well, you know what? When people buy your new book, Litter and Gold... Check check my website regularly. There will be updates. Mm-hmm. Try and include that as like a bonus, a PDF file. That'd be good. Mm-hmm. That works. But that's not where my story ends. Mm. Oh, where is it? So There's Okay, more. so you, you find this hair nail. After disposing of that and wanting to wash my hands completely of it, literally, I went back to my GF's apartment. Mm-hmm. And there, I was taking an ordinary shower when I felt on the back of my neck finger tips pressing into my neck. Uh, are, wow, are, you are you shocked creepy. by that? Are you implying to me, Mr. Sai, that and I would like some, to point some out, kind of spirit has traveled from your the old house to your antique house to your girlfriend's house and touched you on the back? That is kind of frightening. Mm-hmm. Uh, I should point out, by the way, that there was no one else in the shower with me. Mm-hmm. So it couldn't have been another person um, pressing on my neck. It must have been a ghost. Mm. Well, here's a fact. There is one thing that you're not including in this story of yours of the shower back. I don't see what I could not be including in there. There's, there's another person that you're not... There is? There was. The water. Tell me this. When you were showering normally... Was your back or was your back not facing the streams? It it was probably facing the streams at some point, but I would know the difference between a normal stream of water from a shower versus fingertips that were Oh, really? Because I doubt that, because I can't. There are times when I'm showering, and it feels like it feels like there's like a million fingers on your back, right? Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. Shania? Yes. You've yes. told me this, too. You have that um, shower head, right? Uh... That's... But I, see, I can tell the difference. Oh, well, do you think that maybe the fumes were dangerous? And it probably might have affected your senses? I think there's no chance of that at all. So there is no toxic fumes in your basement? I don't know if they were toxic, but I know that I was completely within my senses at the time. Were you wearing and your I know what scuba I felt. gear? Um, no, at the time, I was not. So you were completely nude. Well, I wouldn't say completely, but yes. I mean, 99%. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> well. Although, you know, now that you mentioned that whole traveling ghost thing, it does remind me of something. That morning, before I went over there, mm-hmm. when I looked into the window of my beetle, in the driveway of, of the old house, mm-hmm. I saw that the the seat belts in the back seat had become were were fastened, um, and I always leave them unfastened. So it's like s- but someone when I looked in, or some and they people had been were fastened. S- wow. Are you still always, Mr. Sai? It just seems to me like someone, some people were actually sitting in his back seat. And who like to wear their seat belts. Yeah. All right. Is there a Bible here nearby? Place your hand on the Bible. There is. I don't see one. Don't we have one here somewhere? Uh. I found this sorry, Us, no. Us Weekly magazine. Put your hand on it. Good. I swear to me that those buckles were buckled. All right. What do you want me to say? Just that they were that buckled? They, yes. The, yes. The seat buckles were buckled in the back of my beetle. Okay, I believe them. So first you tell me that you feel and fingertips. And I never leave them, yes. Right, I feel right, because you have no children. Okay, I'll admit, I was not familiar with the shower head in that particular shower, but I could still, I'm sure I could tell the difference, well, though. Well, was it a, a, did the fingertips graze you? Can I you? take my hand off of the us? Uh, yes, you right? can now. Okay. Did, did the fingertips... Hey. Hey. Dylan McDermott. Yeah, that, those are my notes, thank oh. you very much. Did... Did, did the fingertips graze you sensuously, or did they punch you on the spine? I would what say they, they merely pressed um, tentatively. What does this mean, Dushnishlagen? I am not a ghost expert. 
We're going to have him on next week. Hmm. We could ask him. Well, you do have that theory about ghosts and, and aliens being connected, but I guess that's for another show. Um, if it was a ghost of an alien, I might be able to help yeah. you. Well, because we have aliens so far, alien clues happening with the I'm clouds thinking. in the mountain, and there is a mountain behind his house. This leads to the next frightening chapter of my story, if you're prepared for it. Yes, proceed. This is fascinating me. When I went back there the next day, and by the way, this is now about five days after my initial mm -hmm. discovery of the hole. Right. If you were keeping track, and you can write this all down because it will all be, it will all make sense if you write it down. All right, I and will. Not, no contradictions at all. I will write it down, yes. You don't have to do it right now, but... Okay. I later. won't. I won't do it right now. I decided to take a chance and went into the basement without the protective gear. Okay, you don't have to do that right now, though. All right, all right, all right, go on. When I went to the basement the fifth time, I noticed on the ceiling, the concrete ceiling, above, directly above the puddle, mm -hmm. a black, inky sort of stain. Stain? Mm -hmm. What what shape um, was this stain? It was an irregular shape. Mm -hmm. Arabic stain? No, no, irregular. Oh. And from it... I saw a thin, a thin black line. Mm -hmm. It was some sort of fluid, a black fluid that was dripping from the stain straight into the puddle. I tried to remove it. I even tried to chip away at the concrete to get rid of the stain, but the stain was inside of the concrete. So the semi-hardened stain was in the concrete also? Yes, it was coming from the concrete. Have you tried painting over the stain? I attempted to paint over the stain, but first I had to go to my girlfriend, or GF's apartment, Charlene. All right, yes, her fake name. To, well, to, but she is real, though. She is real, but the name is not real. Yes. So she has no name. Well, her, you know, she has a name, but, um, and I call her up and she's complaining about this rat. What? There's always rats over there. Well, where does she I live? I should explain this. Well, she, I mean, not exactly where she lives, but just like in Kalihi or Alamana or something? Well, she lives at somewhere? 1240 Alamana Boulevard, you know, apartment 1723. Wow, well, thank you for telling me her actual address. If anyone wants to come over and just, you know, see that she exists um, and is real. But we can't get your actual address of, of the house. Not the house. The house is very special It has because it has that puddle. All right, okay, now, you're right. There's always rats over there, man. Always oh, really? Rats. I know how that feels. Well, by the time I get over there, though, the rat was gone. Okay. So, head over to get the paint, and what do I find behind the bed? The rat. How did you know that? Well, what, spoons? It could have been spoons. Okay. Well, how, how would this, you get there anyway? I the mean reason that I'm telling you this, though is it's all connected. You see, directly above the rat, in the space between the bed and the wall, on the ceiling, I saw a black stain, not unlike the one that I'd seen earlier. And from it was a black thread, not unlike hair or maple syrup, dripping down from it. Mm -hmm. And when I moved the bed aside, I found a dead rat mm. at the bottom of it. Oh. And the rat. Oh, no, no. When I looked at the rat, there was hair coming out of its facial orifices. Oh, my God. I knew you'd say that. I knew you said, oh, my goodness. So I assume you threw this rat away. I gathered up the rat using a rolled-up newspaper, and I told Charlene, hey, I'm, I'm going to throw this away. Then I went to my car... And I drove. I drove with this dead rat inside of the car. Mm -hmm. And I stopped by the side of the road mm -hmm. in an empty sort of industrial area. Uh-huh. And I took out a pocket knife. Oh, no. Sigh. And I took out the knife and I, I dissected the oh, dead rat. Oh, sigh. And inside, and inside I found... Uh, I found a mass of hair. Hmm. So you're telling me that you cut this dead rat open with your hands? 
hair in the dead rat. Corpse of the rat. It's dead. Was it the same kind of hair? That Silky, was smooth. Out of the nail? As close as I can tell, it was. Mm. The point is, after that, I disposed of the rat. I threw it away. I put lighter fluid on in the dumpster and set it on fire just to make sure right, right. Mm-hmm. that it was destroyed and no one would find it. Mm-hmm. And then I just ran through the night. Well, eventually I found myself back at the house. Wow, that's really frightening. But did I mention it was about 1 a.m. at the time? Hmm. So you know it was dark and scary. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Did you decide to explore the hole further, knowing this fact that the hair was in the rat? Well... We really, this is a whole other story, and we don't have time to get into this, but I will leave you with this one thing that I mentioned. I went back there the next day, and I decided to find out how deep the puddle was. Right, right. So I tied a string to a penny, Mm -hmm. and I lowered it into the puddle. And I lowered it, and it kept on going, Uh and I did not find the bottom. Ever? Ever? So it kept well, going? I only had about six yards of string, but it was at least that deep. Hmm. And that is a deep hole to me. Hmm. And what happened when you pulled the penny out? I'm assuming you did. I'm assuming there's hair on it. Well, there was no hair on it at the time. Oh. But like I said, that's another story. Oh, oh, hear that? Yes, our time is up. One, one other thing I should mention before we go... The toilet that I had poured the, um, the hair and liquid into previously, mm-hmm. um, when I attempted to flush it the next day, the toilet vomited hair. Oh my god, it sigh. Vomited, it came out of it. Sigh. Oh my god. And, uh, well. I need to get a good plumber. Get that hair out. I could go into a lot more detail about this if you just let me. No, uh, uh, I think we're out of time. You maybe, hear that music? Maybe you need to have me back sometime. We will have you back on. This is only the beginning of the tale. Well, can you come back on? Um, yes, I can. Well, Shania. Yes, I think would we're you, out of time. If uh, Charmaine doesn't want to do anything, you know, with me that day. Would you want him to come back on again? At 1 a.m. Um, well, we do have another guest lined up for next week. Well, we can bump them. I mean, yeah, maybe. This vomiting hair. I'm sick of hearing about cows and backflips. You know, unless my girlfriend Shania doesn't, I mean, I'm sorry, um, Charlene, mm-hmm. you know, doesn't want to do anything. Well, maybe she can be on the day. show. Well, I, she wouldn't want to come on the show, but she may just be, you know, busy or something, and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to have to take care of... Um... Business. Yes. You know what? We all take care of business. Mm-hmm. Until that time... Thank you for being here with us tonight. Very informative, very exciting stuff, very mysterious. From the island of Oahu? Yes, the island of buildings. I am your host, Dolby Shitashima. And I'm Shania Ramstehausen. Good night. And good luck. Well, now, wasn't that exciting? That was a very interesting look into the past. So you see how that ties in with the whole... Your brother's show, He Sounded Just Like You, very interesting. Almost ten years ago that was recorded. Wow. We found it on a cassette tape. You know what? Time does go by rather quickly. Looks like we're running out of time for today's episode. Oh. But there will be more, and we're planning a feedback episode soon where we'll answer your questions... Yes, so so feel free to leave questions on this video or via our Facebook. Yes, look for Doom Business on Facebook or uh, at Doom Business on Twitter, which nobody follows. (laughs) Or you could even leave a message on YouTube if you're watching it there, if you can figure out how to leave a message on YouTube now. Uh, I see, because of the Google Plus. Yes. Everyone, thank you for listening. And we'll see you next time on Doom Business. Oh, was I supposed to say it at the same time as you? 
doom. Doom business. Business is dooming. This has been doom business.